There are quite a few lens adapters on the market. Some change focal length, some change mounting system. But if you haven't heard of Metabone speed boosters, you might be surprised by all they can do. Hi, I'm Larry Becker. Today, I'll be covering three Metabone Speed Booster lens mount adapters and one lens mount converter that doesn't have Speed Booster in its name. First, I'll go over the three Metabone Speed Booster mount adapters. I tested a Nikon G lens to Sony E mount Speed Booster, a Nikon G lens to Micro Four Thirds mount, and a Canon EF lens adapter for a Sony E mount. That's the mount on Sony NEX cameras and some Sony cinema style video cameras. The one non speed booster lens adapter I used was the Mark III version of the Canon EF lens to E mount. Early last year, the first Metabone speed booster was released and it impressed a lot of folks. It did things no other lens mount adapter ever did before. It has a lens in it to refocus light on the sensor and distribute it as though the lens was designed for that camera. The process of refocusing that light means that the lens delivers an additional stop of light more than the actual lens spec. Refocusing also means that the crop factor of the smaller APS-C size sensor was effectively canceled out and the lens then delivers its true field of view. Here's what's happening. When you put a lens like this 85 millimeter f1.2 lens on a full frame camera like my Canon 6D, you get the field of view as if you put an 85 millimeter lens on a traditional 35 millimeter film camera. A full frame camera sensor is essentially the same physical size as 35 millimeter slide film. But if I put this same lens on my Canon 70D, which has a smaller APS-C size sensor, there's a 1.6x crop factor. The 70D only sees light from a narrower part of the original lens. So you can estimate its actual field of view or equivalent focal length by multiplying its crop factor of 1.6x by 85 millimeters. You get 136. This means your field of view is approximately the same as if you were using a 136 millimeter lens. If you'd like more information on this topic, I did a three-part lens primer on the B&H YouTube channel, and part two covers crop factor pretty well. Now, remember I said I have one Metabones mount adapter that isn't a speed booster. Let's talk about this one. It's a mount adapter that lets you put Canon EF mount lenses on a Sony E-mount camera. I used a couple of lenses like a Canon 70-200 f2.8 and my 18 to 135 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 EFS STM lens, and they both worked pretty well. They didn't lose or gain any light, and they gave me pretty much the same field of view as if I mounted them on my 70D. These two cameras both have APS-C size sensors, and their megapixel resolution is pretty close as well. 24.3 megapixels on the Sony and 20.2 megapixels on the 70D. As you would expect, the Canon camera and lens combo delivered better images than the same lens adapted to E-mount on the Sony NEX7, but the adapted images were still good. What surprised me though was that metering and image stabilization worked on the adapted lens and the EXIF data was captured as well. The autofocus worked pretty well and was fairly quick, but each time I focused the camera, even if I had just focused and hadn't moved, the lens would still do that full hunt through the whole range before focusing again. Native lenses will always focus more quickly than adapted lenses. When I put the Canon EF mount speed booster adapter on that same Sony NEX7 or the Sony Alpha NEX 5T, which I also tested with these adapters, there were several changes. First, only full frame EF lenses would work with the speed booster. So that 18 to 135 millimeter EFS lens I mentioned earlier that I normally use on my 70D, that was no longer an option. 
However, there were definitely benefits of using the speed booster with the 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens. The fact that the speed booster's lens refocuses the light means two things are going to be different. First, the crop factor pretty much goes away, and you get a 70 to 200 millimeter field of view on the APS-C sized Sony sensor. And since the light that makes up the outer area of the image is being used instead of discarded, that means there's more light hitting the sensor. That reclaimed light means that you get an extra stop of light. So that means your 70 to 200 2.8 is now a 70 to 200 f2 lens. Just like with the mount adapter, image stabilization, EXIF data, metering, and autofocus all still work. However, the autofocus is even slower than just the plain mount adapter. And it does that hunting thing every time as well. I also tested a recently released speed booster that adapts Nikon G lenses to the E mount and a separate speed booster that adapts Nikon G lenses to the Micro Four Thirds mount. Like the Canon version, these also add a stop of light and they reframe and refocus the light to effectively eliminate the crop factor. However, unlike the Canon version, none of the automatic functionality works. Everything has to be done manually, including setting the exposure and focusing. You'll notice right away that these speed boosters don't have the electronic pins that allow communication of data between the lens and the camera, so the EXIF data does not get captured. That also means that since the aperture can't be set with the camera's electronic controls, you'll need to use the manual aperture ring on the speed booster adapter itself. Since the camera and the lens don't communicate at all, you'll need to change the setting on your camera to allow the shutter release with no lens. The good news is that since the Sony NEX cameras and the Panasonic Lumix G camera I tested all have electronic viewfinders, you can see what the exposure will look like before you snap the images. In the still images I shot, I was pleased with the overall quality I got. In the center of the image area, the images were nearly as good as I'd get from that same lens on the body that it was intended for. However, when you push the limits of a lens, like using the widest aperture settings, you'll see that there's noticeable vignetting and some chromatic aberration as you get away from the center area. As you stop down, that becomes less apparent. None of the negative issues are dramatic or unacceptable at all. They're the kinds of things that can easily be remedied with camera raw processing. I can see these speed boosters being even more exciting to people who are used to focusing and setting aperture manually themselves, such as pro videographers. That extra stop of light and the ability to adapt Canon or Nikon glass to their APS-C video camera rigs is a huge benefit. I can also imagine pro photographers liking the speed boosters because they can mount their full frame glass onto small, more portable APS-C equipped cameras so they can get the field of view that they're used to, but in a smaller package. However, if you think that you'll be getting the same images as somebody using a full frame Canon or Nikon body, you're kidding yourself. Modern full frame sensors are simply going to outperform APS-C sensors no matter what magic a speed booster adapter promises. In the end, the speed booster adapters and the Canon EF to Sony E-mount adapter are solid performers that deliver what they promise. And if you've got the glass and you're not afraid to control the manual settings you need to, Metabone speed boosters and adapters give you more possibilities than ever before. Check out these and all the Metabone's adapter options on the B&H site. For B&H and Kelby One, I'm Larry Becker. Thanks for watching. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, B&H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help. Scott Kelby here and welcome to this quick tour of our online training. We have hundreds of online classes for you covering everything from lighting to landscape photography. From portrait photography to sports, we have classes on wedding, automotive photography, shooting, food, fashion, travel, you name it. The most incredible part of this is the price. You get all of this for just $199 a year or you can pay monthly for just $24.95. 24 hour a day, seven day a week access from anywhere in the world. I invite you to join with us today and start learning right now.